Hello everyone and welcome to Claret and Booze. My name's Nick. Almost Christmas. Almost Christmas. How are you all feeling? How are you all feeling? I've let the dust settle. I didn't want to come on again yesterday. We we did a brilliant show after um that horrific defeat. We got to speak to so many of you after that game. Uh, a couple of people that um towards the end of the show that actually went to the game as well. One of them was staying in Liverpool and the other the other guy was driving back. It was half eleven at night and he still had 190 miles to go. Um, really good calls and gave you a little bit of an insight into how those people were feeling, even though you could, you could, you know, you, you could understand it. Um, but look, before we get into this show, um, please subscribe if you haven't already. We're not going to make the 10K yet. I think we're 700 away or something like that, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, we're still doing well. Drop a like on the video because uh, it does really help us. And uh, stick around, because I've got a little message at the end of this one as well. So I'm going to talk about the um, the aftermath of that game. Uh, then we're going to look ahead to Manchester United. And then, like I say, I've got a little message at the end as well. So, yeah, I, I, I must admit, yesterday, normally what happens is when you get a defeat like that, when I say a defeat like that, that was that was like something I've, I've not really witnessed before. That was worse. That was a worst that I've I've known it under David Moyes. You know, if 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 anyone wants to know why people are Moyes out or they've got the ump with him, that was everything all wrapped into one. And the, and then if you embody his post match interviews into the mix as well, you've got the full mix, the full mix. All these pundits, these people who kind of look at West Ham through a snapshot. You know, people that are not West Ham fans who just basically go West Ham. Let's have a look where they are on the table. Oh, yeah, they look good. Last sixteen. Have a little look, see a few goals on match of the day. What are them fans moaning about? Watch those, watch that game, listen to his post-match interviews, and then that will give you some idea as to why many people want that guy out. Um, and what I will say as well, a lot of the fans were, for the first time in a long while, I think we were kind of galvanised and all together after that show because even a lot of people that were staunch Moyes in, because that wasn't really so much about Moyes in or Moyes out. That was just an attack on all West Ham fans. There's nothing that we love more than uh, a cup journey. There's, there's not, and we were so close. We was, we were so close. You know, Liverpool, a, a, a great team, but that was not their full strength team at all. You know, we went out in the round previous, as David Moyes illustrated in his post match interview, and we, we, we blew Arsenal away. Arsenal were a top team as well. You know, if if you wanted that game, we could have gone for it and at least made a fist of it. Because if you go out, especially in the cup, in the quarterfinal, you've got to go out the right way. You've got to go out fighting. And and he didn't even try. It was it was horrendous. You know, everyone called it. The minute we saw that starting lineup, we all our hearts sank. You know, universally, I think throughout the fan base, we all knew what was happening. And he threw that game. He threw that game so that we could what temporarily leapfrog Man United into sixth place for a few games. You know, what's the, what's the point in that? You know, he's going to have to go and win that, isn't he? Um, well, I say that, I don't, I'm not really too fussed, but I'll talk about that after. But like I say, I didn't listen to any of his post-match interviews directly after the game because we went live and we spoke to all of you lot. Uh, but I have made the mistake of listening to him since, and it's just horrific. You know, we know the guy never accepts any responsibility whatsoever, ever. But he was in full denial mode. Um, you know, the, the the official West Ham channel, the guy that interviews him, that interview was just horrific, you know. Uh, he just shut the guy down immediately. He went, look, Liverpool, they're too good, too too strong, too fast. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that, is it, Dave? So that's your justification. They're too good, so we won't even try. There's, no, there's not even a conversation there. You're not even going to try and justify it. That's, that's it. I mean, because don't forget, Liverpool are in the Europa as well, Dave. So is there any point in us going any further at some point we're going to have to play them and Leverkusen who are probably on par with Liverpool at the moment are we going to try against these teams or is it just going to be that defeatist attitude you know that kind of builds on the narrative that you span before the Fulham game which was we we can't we can't push for top six because of Aston Villa we haven't got the resources that was that was your that was your narrative then it's, it's such a, a defeatist message and mindset that you've got and that bleeds into the fans and it clearly bleeds into those players. Uh, but the worst thing that he did in that post-match interview, the one on the West Ham channel, was he referenced the fact that people have been asking me to make changes and rotate. Perhaps now 
you can see why the manager doesn't do that. And maybe in future, you won't ask many questions. You won't doubt me. Really? I mean, so, talk about Sam Allardyce vibes. I mean, that's worse than Sam because Sam never went to the extent of following it up in a post-match interview. He knew what he'd done. You know, his, his actions proved the point. He didn't have to go out and do that. But he hasn't proved any point. He's proved no point at all. When we were talking about rotation, we were talking about rotating players coming into this busy period so that they were fresh and ready and he could use them as we're coming into AFCON so that he could use them. But all he's done over the past few weeks, months, is demoralise his backup players, give them no game time, and then he, he makes six changes in what was the most important game this year for West Ham fans, makes six, cha six changes, throws those players in, throws them straight under the bus. He does, you know. And, and there were some shocking performances there. But is it any wonder? You know, he took every bit of flair and guile and, and, and forward thinkingness off of the pitch. All the, Everything that we've seen against uh, uh, Freiburg and Wolves, he extracted that. He castrated that team and then he sent them out on the pitch. And you've got the likes of Ben Johnson who's played hardly any minutes and he gave a good account of himself apart from the fact that he made that mistake that led to the first goal. But other than that, he did, he, he did well. He did all right. You know, but a lot of the other players, you know, your, 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 your four nails, your rock bonners, they were they, they were awful, but they were no worse than, than the mainstay, Thomas Suchek. They were no worse than players like that. You know, it, it, it was a, a, a generic shit show. It was. Those players on the pitch behaved in a way that it didn't matter. And I don't think it did matter. If you saw David Moyes' body language on the sidelines, he didn't care. The only time he got aerated was when he was, he was spitting vitriol at, at Johnson, one of the better players on the pitch. Whenever he could get within earshot of Johnson, he was in his ear roll, constantly berating him all the time. And um, I'm I'm just I'm just absolutely sick of it. I mean, I'm so glad that John took the reins on the Wednesday night show because, as you know, I'm I'm not what I'm not very often lost for words. But I was lost for words after that one. I get angry quite easy, but I kind of went beyond anger in that one. I was shocked. Shocked that the guy could have that level of arrogance and complete and completely disregard the fans. It was it was a one hundred percent. That was a fuck you to the fan base. It was. This we said it already. The six thousand fans that travelled up there five days before Christmas. How can you do that? How can you do it? There has to be the the the, the club. David Moyes is never going to react, but the club have got to react. They've got to do something, even if it's a token. Um, refund on, on tickets or give them vouchers for something else because that was absolutely despicable what they did there. And he did that. He rested those players. Bearing in mind, there was talk of the bug. Well, ex-West Ham United employee, he confirmed that the only players that were affected by that bug were Corney, who never plays anyway, and Agwe. That was it. The rest of them that were rotated out, your James Will Prouses, your Paquettas, your Emersons, Zuma, they were rested. And that's what I mean. He's talking about resting and giving players an opportunity, but they, they didn't take it. It wasn't an opportunity. Is it really an opportunity to give players that have had no game time whatsoever, they get their opportunity in a completely hugely changed team away at Anfield in the Cup? Is that an opportunity, is it? Is it really? I don't think so, mate. You threw them under the bus and you threw us under the bus in the process as well. You proved nothing. And I know that you thought that you did, but you didn't. You just showed your colours again. Again. And I don't really know what more people need to see of this guy. I know people think he's a safe pair of hands and this, that, the other. I can't stand the man. <laughs> I honestly can't. I'm not saying that he hasn't done well and he hasn't achieved since he's been here. Look, he has. He has achieved. But I can't stand him. I can't. Um, I just can't wait for the day he goes. I can't. We, we need to move on to the next stage as quickly as possible. And that isn't going to be until the end of the season. We know that. But then, like I say, there was loads of crap. He, he spoke about in that post-match interview, he, he was harping on about, you know, the the, the squad fixture, the, the fixture list, you know. Oh, poor me, the squad fixture list. It, this is a guy that's saying, you know, he's, his players are getting fatigued, but he doesn't like rotating. And he's already come out and said he doesn't want a striker. He doesn't want these players. <clears throat> because he doesn't like working with too many players. He, he, he can only work in this type of environment. And he creates this for himself, you know? 
And then he came out and said, um, just started harping on his defence when he was kind of in the press conference. He just started going back, you know, would you would you have um, thought that West Ham would be competing for Europe, for, for trophies, for this, that, the other, just blowing smoke up his own arse again. And do you know what? There was an awkward silence in that press conference because recently, you know, up to a couple of months ago, when he starts churning this stuff out, this is when you know his back's against the wall. There would have been a lot of, a lot of agreement there, but there was nothing. There was like a deathly silence. There was. Um, so it's starting to wear thin everywhere now. It really is. You know, the guy can't... He bought himself a little bit of faith, a little bit of credit with that cup, with that cup. but it doesn't completely discard the fact that we were in a 35-game relegation battle last season. It doesn't. And I, I just can't get it through my head what, what he thinks he's doing. He really, really loves himself. He does. You know, he believes, he, he believes his own hype. And he does think that he's bigger than West Ham. He does. I've got no doubt about that. I think this is all about him developing his CV. I think he's pretty certain he's not going to be here at the end of the season. And, you know, a cup quarter final is a good tick box. He wants to get as high up the league as he can and as far as he can in the Europa, Ch- in, in the Europa League. And I think that's going to be enough for him to sort of go out and, 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 and tout himself about for another job. Because most people will just look at it as a snapshot, as I said, like the pundits did. That's what they'll look at. They'll look at the high-level achievements when they look at recruiting him. I don't think that he's going to get another top job in the Premier League. Who's he going to replace? What, Roy Hodgson at Palace? Maybe. But he's not going to go any higher than that. He will not get a bigger job than West Ham. Certainly not in this league. Um, I just can't wait for it to happen. But then, obviously, the Man United uh, pre-match press conference was just pretty much the same as what he always does. He spends 10 minutes bigging up the opposition. They're a top club. Ooh, never easy playing against Man United, talking about the fixture list and and everything else there. Only Liverpool and Man City have played more games than us and blah, blah, blah. Just poor me. The, the same crap all the time. Um, and he was just rude and abrupt. And someone asked him in the press conference, uh, what are you doing over Christmas then, Dave? Just a nice question. Just, just, just a nice personal question. And he's, he basically, in a very stern way, he just basically said, that's none of your business. None of your business what I'm doing over Christmas. That's personal. I can't stand him. He needs to go. He needs to go ASAP. But anyway, look, so we're looking ahead to Man United. Man United is a game that David Moyes needs to win. I don't care either way. Be nice to win. Be nice to be in the, in sixth spot over Christmas. I can't say I'm, I'm overly bothered out the two of them. Uh, I almost resent this game now because the fact that we threw away a cup quarterfinal, as I said earlier on, for what? To temporarily leapfrog Man United? You know, we're not going to stay in the top six. It's not going to happen because unfortunately he has to play these teams that he shits himself against quite a few times in the season. So it, we're, we're, we're not we're not going to stick around uh, there. But yeah, so, so will he win? He needs to win. I'm not too sure that, that we will. I don't think this ever works when you sacrifice a game for a further game. It certainly didn't work earlier this season when he threw the Olympiacos game. We then went and lost horribly to Everson. I could see the same happening again. Man United are crap. But look, half the time we're crap. I think they'll beat us. I think they will. I'm going for a 2-1 or a 3-1 Man United. Bear in mind my predictions are always wrong anyway. Uh, I predicted a win against Liverpool, so that you know, so maybe reverse psychology. We might get the win, but like I said, I don't, re- I, I don't really care either way. All it's going to do is make him look an even, even bigger mug if we go and lose that game. You know, he's he's got to win it. He's got to win it now. After doing that, unforgivable what he did, and I don't, I think that will have turned a lot of people that were on the edge or that were Moyes in the other way, and so it should. So it should. I, 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 you know, I'm fed up caveating um, what I say about David Moyes. Oh, you know, I've got the ump with him, but I do acknowledge that he's done this and he's done it. I'm bored with it now. I'm bored with it. You know, and and as for giving him credit when he when he does something right, why? He does things wrong so often. There's always more questions than answers with David Moyes. He gets paid £5 million a year. This ain't a poor old boy in a job that's going to be down a job centre if he gets made redundant. He's a multi-millionaire. He gets paid £5 million a year to manage a football team and go out there, put the right team out. Why should we be blowing smoke up his arse and patting him on the back when he does his job? You know, if he was doing it more often, then that may be the case. But as he does it, uh, you know, what, what, what is it? 
I don't know what the ratio is. You know, I know he's he's record, he's scraping wins and stuff like that. But on the whole, you are always left with more questions and answers. So no, I'm not patting him on the back when he gets it right every now and then. Now, it's what he's paid to do. It's what he's paid to do. You know, are we are we patting goalkeepers on the back for 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 saving shots? Now, you know, again, it's what they're paid to do. I, I, I can't I can't be arsed with it. Um, so yeah, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Let me know uh, about about Man United. But I'm going to try my best to not. Let that horrible fucker ruin my Christmas. I'm not. So whatever happens against Man U, I'm going to try and positively spin it in my own head. I'm, I've almost accepted defeat. I'm going to have a nice uh, weekend and week next week with my family. And um just going to do my best to enjoy it. And West Ham are not going to be ruining my Christmas. They're not. Um So sort of moving on to, moving on to Christmas anyway, I just wanted to give you all... um uh, a quick message from Claret and Booze, and that is to say a massive thank you for continuing to support us, continuing to watch us. You know, this magnificent community that we've all built together on here as well. Uh, it's just brilliant from the live chat to the phone calls that we get. I mean, the phone calls are the, are the, are the best bit. That's definitely, hands down, the best part of what we do is when we get to talk to, to, to you guys after a game or on a on a Sunday night. Um, it's fantastic. It really is. And the live chat are brilliant, you know, Brutal, funny, uh, honest, just, just, uh, I absolutely, I love it. I love it. You know, and that is, there's four of us as well. So it's, it's me, Gary, John, and Mickey. So there's four of us moving into next year. A um, few changes coming as well. Uh, thank you very much to all the members um, that have, um, that continue to sort of support us. We really, really do appreciate that. Thanks to everyone who's thrown us super chats uh, throughout the year. It all, it all does, it does really, it does really help us. And um, yeah, the, the sub base has grown has grown significantly this year. We've we've over doubled. We've doubled this year, so it's been um, I think over doubled. It's not like sixty or seventy percent we've grown this year. So it's amazing, really. It's amazing. So long may it continue. Like I say, we're looking forward to next year. Um, not so much the football, but we know that change is coming. So you know you've got to try and look try and look for the positives. Um, and going back to Christmas as well. Um, as as we know, if you've watched our shows, you know. We're 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 well aware that there's an awful lot of people out there that are not um that are not in in the best place. Christmas is an incredibly difficult time for for a lot of people, whether it's financial or emotional. You know, um you know myself and Gary um and and John, you know, we've 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 lost parents. Christmas ain't the same anymore. It's not. It can be great because we've got kids and we've got our family, but sad at the same time. It's it's not not like it was. You know, I might be forty three, but you never stop missing your mum and dad. Believe me. Um. So it is really difficult, and, and and like I say, with the cost of living crisis as well, it's putting even more pressure on people. Um, just you know what I mean. Just it's only it's only a day. Enjoy it if you've got all your family around you. Make the most of it. Uh, really, really fucking enjoy it. Um, you know, hold everyone tight, and you ain't got to, you haven't got to be rich or wealthy or be frying loads of money about. You know, your Christmas is all about family. Um, so just just it's it's what you make it. And if there is anyone that's struggling out there as well, don't forget, look, it is only one day. You just got to get through it. And if you do need any help or support, please just give us a give us a message because we are we are here for you. Um, after all, I've got my phone number as well, so you can always give me a phone call. All right. So, like I say, we're always always here um, to sort of speak to people that are struggling. Um, and also, finally, as well, um, as you know, I'm I'm a bit of a dog person. Got four dogs. Uh, Bubbles, my little girl, she's gone in for a, for an operation today. We took her in this morning. Um, quite a big operation as well. So. Fingers crossed. But wish her, wish her good luck for me. I hope she um, hope she she pulls through. I'm sure she will. I'm sure she will. We're going to find out um, later on this afternoon around about five o'clock. Um, so we're just kind of waiting very nervously here uh, for 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 the news. But hopefully it all went well. Um, bless her. She's only um, she's just just a year old. So um, yeah. But look, that's um, that's that's it from me anyway. Again, thanks for everything, um, guys and girls. Um, Still loving doing what we're doing, um, not enjoying the football, but loving Claret and Booze, loving all you lot. And uh, we shall have a nice Christmas, Happy New Year, and I will see you next year. Before I before I do go, um, I'm on the West Ham Fan TV Friday night point tonight as well at 8 o'clock, um, unless I have any issues with the dog at the vet. Um, but I, I'm not I'm not expecting that to be the case. Um, so hopefully that'll, that'll be the case. I'll be on with, with those guys uh, tonight from eight as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, you know, we, we do, we do love West Ham fan TV and there might be another show as well on Saturday, but can't make any promises cause it's busy this time of year. So I don't know when we can all get together. It might be Saturday, but it might not be all right. 
So I'll say I'll say goodbye again. Thank you very much, everyone. It's been a it's been a it's been a bumpy ride, and I'll speak to you all soon. Come and your eyes.